I know when I was a kid, my mom would often tell me to think about how much worse people in other areas had it. Like how terrible it must be for those kids starving in Africa, or how bad it must be for that child that was being abused somewhere. And this was a frequent uh, thing throughout my childhood. And I'm sure that a lot of you guys had the same experience. And I'm sure that you guys were just as frustrated as I was when somebody told you this because in a lot of ways, it minimizes our own suffering to say, well, that person has it worse. It's saying, well, I'm not allowed to struggle. I'm not allowed to feel what I'm feeling right now. And now with a little bit different perspective, I realize what my mom was really trying to say. It had a lot less to do with telling me that I couldn't have my feelings and a lot more to do with perspective. Because while we are all entitled to our feelings and we all are entitled to feel sad, to feel happy, to feel angry, to feel whatever it is we're feeling, sometimes when we think about the struggles of others and we really put that suffering into perspective, it's going to make us realize the source of that suffering. And the source of the suffering isn't exactly the situation itself, it's the fact that we're rejecting the pain, we're rejecting the emotions that come along with the experience. For example, when my mom passed away, obviously I felt sad. I was mourning my mother. I was going through this process that I needed to go through, that I deserved to be able to go through of trying to mourn my mother. But the more I rejected it, the more I suffered. And it took me years to get to a place where I could function on any level whatsoever because I kept fighting it and I kept rejecting it and I kept trying to stay in that place of denial because that was the coping mechanism that I had developed for myself along with several other extremely not healthy coping mechanisms. I stayed in that denial stage of the grief instead of just allowing myself to move through those emotions. And I'm noticing that a lot now people are doing the same thing. Instead of accepting what's going on, accepting the emotions that come along with that, they are rejecting it. And it's the rejecting of the reality that creates the suffering. It's rejecting that, yes, everything's different right now. Yes, everything's probably going to be different for quite some time. But that is our reality. And there's no suffering for most of us from the very basis of that fact. While there might be side effects of this, uh, like a loss of income or maybe even a loss of your home, the suffering isn't from these circumstances because there are people that lose their homes, that lose their incomes, that lose these things, and they can still find happiness and peace because they don't reject the emotions that they're going through. They say, hey, this is hard and I feel sad and I'm going to do what I need to do to get through that. But the point is I'm going to get through it. I'm going to move through the natural process of my emotions. So when you find yourself in these situations, be it a global pandemic or grief, or you're really just stressed out, or maybe your car broke down, no matter what the situation is, Allow whatever emotions are arising to play through you in whatever healthy manner they are wanting to, really. If you're feeling like you just need to get some energy out, there is no shame in just going to your car, driving away from people, and screaming your brains out. If you need to cry, cry. There's no shame in that. And the sooner you can get through those emotions, less likely you are to be stuck in that state of suffering. Yes, I do a lot of journaling and I do a lot of yoga, but there's also a lot to be said for just going and listening to loud music, which is ironic because as a child, I hated loud music and I hated singing loudly. I hated being loud. I just hated anything loud whatsoever. But as an adult, I realized kind of why that was because I didn't feel like I really had the right to be loud. And I didn't really like that loud 
uh, those loud noises, especially when they weren't invited, because it made me feel like I was losing control. I didn't have the control to just kind of zone things out like I often did and often do when I just don't want to listen to something. I didn't have that option, so it made me feel like I was losing control. But nowadays, I've realized that it's a really powerful tool to be able to process through something that I'm feeling. If I am angry, I can go, like I said, scream at these lyrics top of my lungs in my car. If I'm feeling sad, I can go curl up in bed or curl up in my closet or curl up in the shower and just listen to a song and cry. And that's how I evoke the emotions that I need to evoke to get through what it is I'm dealing with or I'm facing. So instead of rejecting them and saying, I need to feel better right now, I need to feel better right now, understanding it's okay if I don't feel better right now. It's okay if I feel afraid or sad or angry. What matters here isn't the emotion you feel, it's how you handle that emotion. It's how you respond to that emotion. So let me know in the comments down below how you respond to your intense emotions. Give me one really good story of how you manage to respond in a healthy and positive way to what most would consider a really intense situation. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, share this video if you found it helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I love you guys so much and I'll see you soon.